Today we're going to learn how to exit and or end a program with Python. So um, if, you, if you have a Python program running and you want to kill that program or exit it correctly, whether you want to do it forcefully or exit it correctly, whether you're exiting a script or exiting the interpreter, we're going to show you how to do that. So there's a few different ways you can do it. Um, check the document on the right side. We're going to have a link to this in the description. This is our quick little guide on how to, you know, exit and programs. These are not like, you know, obviously like this first one you see here, we just import sys and say sys exit. That's not a full program. The only thing it does is exit. Um, obviously you'd want to have some logic and do some other things in there. But anyways, this basically just illustrates how you would do it. So, um, let's start out. Let's create a script. Um, let's call this test1.py. Um, now, now all we're going to do is just, uh, we're, we're going to show you how you do this. Now this is generally what you would do programmatically from a script. You, you pretty much should use sys exit. So let, let's paste this in here. Now this script is only going to, it's going to say import sys, um, and sys.exit. So, and it, it's basically going to exit when it reaches the end of the script anyways. So this doesn't do a whole lot. It just shows you how this function works. Um, but, but that's it. So this is probably the least exciting. Um, this is the least in exciting instructional video I'm going to record today. Um, hopefully this helps somebody. So super quick, easy video I'm, I'm going to do on this. Um, let's see. Pyth Python 3. Python 3 and run it on our test script. There we go. It just exits and does nothing. So that is exactly what we expect it to do. Now, um, the other thing you can do. You, you actually let, let's jump back into our script real quick now you actually don't even need to import sys just delete this line and just call exit now this is not what you should do but you can do this now or, or this is not what you should do programmatically from a script so run the script does nothing except exit okay that's fine um and the script would exit naturally if we didn't even have that exit um, function called. So this is really meant to be used. It's not meant for production use within actual production code. It's meant to be called more from the interpreter when you're just testing things out. But um, you know, it is quick and easy to call exit like that. Um, what, what, what else? Uh, so yeah, you can call exit like this. You can also call quit. So um, yeah, which is basically the same as exit Q U I T. And yeah, there we go. Does the same thing. Not nothing exciting. Most pr probably the most boring uh, video I'm making this this morning. Um, but let's see. You could also use os dot os underscore exit. Now this is normally used. Um, you know, it's normally used to close a child process after it's been forked. It doesn't flush buffers, call cleanup handlers, etc. So it's not gonna, it's not, there's a lot of stuff that it, you might expect it to do, um, you know, flushing buffers and all that, which is not gonna get done when you call this, but it's great if you're running a program and you, you've just forked off a child process. So I'm, I'm gonna show you how you might do this. Um, and then we're gonna show you how to run exit from the interpreter real quick. All right, so let's edit our script real quick and just add this in here. So OS exit, all right import os you're actually gonna have to import os all right in os dot underscore exit and you're, you're passing the exit code okay exit ex okay all right anyways um run this does exact does basically nothing exactly what you would expect all right so now let's say if you're running the python interpreter like this now you can't just get out of here you, you, you can't just i mean you could control c it if you want it even that it catches it um, you, you could probably forcefully get out of here, but generally you can't just type exit. It, it tells you though, it says, um, and you could use control D if you want, but it tells you use exit parentheses because you're actually calling a function and it expects you to treat it that way. So you can exit like that. And if you're in the interpreter, you can say exit, or you could say quit, which just feels wrong, but I, I, th I think you should use exit, but anyways, they both do basically the same thing, and they're both meant for you know using in the, the interpreter like that. So because you're you're not gonna you know you don't want to start up the interpreter and have to say import sys you know sys dot exit 
just because you want to exit out of an interpreter, right? You're not going to be importing libraries just to exit your, your Python shell. That would be crazy. Um, anyways, so I, I think that's all we really needed to cover with that. Um, the next thing we want to do, we're going to ed edit our script and, oh, you know what? Actually, let's, let's try Python 2. So Python 2, can we exit like this? No, Python 2 also expects you to use exit like that. Um, anyway, so you can also use control C to kill a running program from the command line. Let's try to create like a program that won't exit. exit. So, um, so let's see here. Wow. Oops. While true pass. So this should run an infinite loop that does nothing. So Python 3, test 1. All right, so this is running. It's not exiting, right? We, we have this 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 uh, Python program that just runs forever doing nothing. Um, so we, if we want to get out of this, you can just press Control C, and it closed our program. That's 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 real nice. Um, so you can run Python test one, Python three test one again, and here we see it looks like it's hanging. It's basically just doing that infinite loop that does nothing. So you can you can also say Control Z to put it in the background, um, and we can check jobs. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually, this, this whole thing about jobs, I'm assuming, I wrote this assuming we're running on Linux, and here I am running this on a Mac, so I'm honestly not sure if this behaves the same way. It should. It has, um, you know, this has basically BSD user space programs, so it, it probably behaves the same way as Linux. But let's just see, do we have any jobs running? All right, we have one suspended job. It's our, our script, test1.py. So if you say and it's suspended right now. Now we could say BG and we BG1. One specifies the, the number of the job that we have running in the background there. This is going to put the job into Right now it's suspended, but we want to put it into the background. So our script is going to be running right there in the background. Um, job not found. Not, not sure. Do we even still have that job? To specify it with a modulus. Now I could swear on, on Linux you didn't actually need to do this, um, but let, let's specify it like this and see if it works. All right, there we go. So it looks like job one is now continued. So we have our Python script that does nothing continuously running in the background. So we could say jobs and we see one job running in the background. That That's that's pretty nice. Um, let's just, you know, for curiosity's sake or just, just for fun, let's run this again and we're gonna run control Z so, to put it in the background, and again, and again. So we're running a few of them in the background now. But we can say jobs, and notice we see uh, we see four jobs running in the background. This one's running. These three are suspended. So let's say if we wanted to start up job number three, or we could say BG modulus uh, three. So when I had initially tested this, I tested this on Linux. Now this isn't really a Python thing. I'm just showing you how to run run jobs in the background and foreground. It's it's more of a Unix Linux thing. Um, works like this on Mac OS. And when I tested this, I could swear I was I was using this without the modulus on Linux. So apparently Mac OS and Linux work a little bit differently in that way. Um, let's see here, jobs. So now we have job one and three running in the background. So let's say if we want to foreground a job, we can say FG to foreground it, and we can bring job number one to the foreground. Um, whoops, add a modulus in there, and there we go. Job three is in the foreground now. So here it is taking up our current, so we can't run commands because we're basically stuck, you know, sending input and output to uh, this this job here in the foreground. So it it's running and it's running in the foreground. Let's, let's suspend it again and uh, Let's just put it back in the background. There we go. So now we have uh, all these jobs in the background, two of them suspended, two of them running. Um, so we, we, we could do this with you know number two and number four as well, and just have a bunch of jobs running in the background. So that's all fine and great. Um, all right, so I think this is me kind of getting off on a tangent. I've already showed you how to exit a 
I've, I've already showed you how to exit uh, a script and exit from the, the interpreter. So I think we covered more than more than what we really set out to cover today. Um, would have been nice to have, I, I guess if I could have had like a more, you know, elaborate setup where, you know, you have some logic, if some condition is met, then exit. Um, but oh, I mean, I guess that's kind of out of scope too. Would, would have been nice, um, but uh, essentially you see how it works. Basically, if there's a condition where you want to exit, basically just call sys.exit. You know, make sure you import sys at the top of your code and say sys.exit when you want to actually exit. So um, that that's that's what you would do. You know, whatever part of your code you want to call that in, it would work the exact same way. So I almost forgot. I wanted I should cover this. I should actually show you how to kill these jobs. I guess this counts as uh, you know killing or ending a program. So this is how you kill a Python program or any other program for that matter. So you can see there. I just I, I ran this off of uh, you know while I wasn't recording, but I, I realized I should probably show this. Um, I, I was just cleaning up processes, but terminated, you can say kill in modulus and specify the job number, and it's gonna, you know, terminate that Python program. So you can say jobs, and you can see we have uh, three of these jobs, job two, three, and four. You can also run ps um, and see the current processes for my current, you know, login and user. Um, definitely not everything that's running on the system, but you can see, you know, I, I have some Python th three processes running. Um, yeah, apparently I have, it shows a bunch of other stuff I'm running from other shells too. But, um, any case, we're, the, these, these are our three Python scripts that we're running. Those are the three jobs. You, you want to, oops, jobs. So you want to kill them. You can say kill, um, and you can say modulus. So normally if you say kill, you specify the PID of a program. You could specify the PID or you could specify the job number. You say kill two will uh, kill job two. So you're gonna see we only have two jobs running now. And if we run PS, you see we have only have two pro Python processes running right now. So um, we will, uh, let, let's try killing by process. Now we're, we're really getting off on a tangent here, but um, copy this and paste this in here. So we can kill it based on the PID, terminated the program. So we run PS, we only have one Python program running now. And we can run jobs, we only have one job running. So when you kill by PID, I mean, you don't know for sure which, uh, or I didn't know for sure which um, job I was killing, but it looks like it killed job three. So let's just kill that last one just for good measure. Um, modulus four, and just kill it. All right, there we go. Jobs, all right, all jobs are gone. Um, so there you go, we've killed all the programs. Um, and that's about it. Hopefully you found this useful and hopefully this particular video was not too boring. Um, you might want to give us a thumbs up, might want to leave a comment down below if you know something that I don't know, or if you have any questions, criticisms, whatever you want to say, I, I probably want to hear it. So do leave a comment down below. Might want to hit the thumbs up, might probably want to hit the subscribe button. We have a lot of other great content, not just Python related stuff. Um, you know, we're doing servers, coding, you know, 3D printing, electronics, or Raspberry Pis, all kinds of great stuff. So you're, you're going to want to subscribe, probably hit the bell icon so you get a notification when we come out with new videos. And um, that's about it for today. So um, as always, thanks for watching and we will see you guys next time.